bring this uh, regular meeting of council for February the 6th, 2018 to order. Moved by Councilor Morial, seconded by Councilor Delorier, resolved that the agenda for February the 6th, 2018 regular meeting of council be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier, resolved that the minutes of the January 16, 2018 regular meeting of Council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, for delegations and hearings, we have with us tonight uh, Carl Robley and Brett, Brett Proniak in regards to the road access. Gentlemen, I us can come forward and make your presentation before council and then the council will have a chance to ask questions or redirect. Good evening. Thank you council for allowing us to come and, and make this presentation tonight. Appreciate it very much. And uh, so I've, I've uh, kind of written down because I'm not going to remember Go everything. For it. Yeah. But anyway, dear council members, on November 7th, 2017, I was present here to represent Mr. Peroniak uh, to read a letter he submitted to the town council regarding his request for the town of Swan River to provide an access road to the property of 509 and 511 Kelsey Trail at no cost to the property owner. This evening, I'm here on my own behalf with the same request uh, as I have purchased the property and I'm now the new owner. Uh, there is still a need for the access road to be provided. As you are already aware, the only access to the property has been the verbal agreement between previous owners, which can be revoked at any time. Uh, as you prepare to make your decision uh, regarding this proposal, I would ask you to consider a few things. And I've got them listed here. Uh, firstly, uh, this property has been taxed by the Town of Swan River since 1964 for 54 years. Uh, that entire time, sole access has been granted and provided by the adjacent property owner. Uh, secondly, in that 54 years, the town of Swan River has never incurred any expense as far as developing, maintaining, or removal of snow from any such road to this property. Uh, thirdly, I feel that we are not asking for anything more than the vast majority of taxpayers in Swan River already have. Uh, many have a street as well as a back lane to access their property. Uh, fourth, the tax base increase from the adjacent new development should easily more than cover the cost incurred to build this access road. Uh, it is because of this new development, new development that the need uh, for the access road has arisen and is necessary. And five, uh, why has the Public Works reserved this land all these years for 54 years? And uh, surely it must have been reserved for future development. And lastly, I do not feel that this is setting a precedent uh, as the property that would be used for this access road is already owned by the town of Swan River. So I thank you uh, very much for your careful consideration to these matters, sincerely. Thank you. And did you, we, do you want to answer any questions first or do you want to have Brett go ahead? Um, I just the only I only have really um, uh, a couple of different items on this uh, on this uh, item itself is um, one of the major concerns too with this residential development coming up now is the narrowing of the laneway. Um, I know myself even in approaching coming through that property now, there's an, an elderly lady that lives in the condo at the end that will come out of her place and a couple times I've had to almost come to a stop because she didn't realize in walking across the lane that someone was traveling through. So it poses a serious safety concern because of her being there. There's a five lane garage that's narrowed the way with the condos where people backing out of there, I've seen her in particular back out of there and not realize that there was any traffic coming. And now this is, this is in light of the fact that I know there's residents there, and Carl knows there's residents there, but Carl also has customers that don't know the nature of the residents there. So when these people come into this approach, maybe going slow, but not realizing that there's different groups of people, kids, elderly people, and everything moving through here, 
And with that narrow laneway, now it has created a safety concern, I feel. I know when I drive through there, I get very nervous now, because I don't know if somebody's going to come out of the garage or one of the condos. So, and, and yeah, I think what Carl hit on too with the fact that, you know, after paying 54 years of taxes and my dad paying 38 years of that, that, he did not build that home, that home. He moved into that with that access being granted. But with that access at any time that the property owner decides adjacent to, to decide to say, we're gonna revoke that with nothing hard and fast other than a handshake or a verbal, what happens if there's, he decides to revoke access and there's a fire? We pay for the services through our taxes, but how's the fire truck get through? Does it drive across the yard? You know, there's diff different scenarios where he has not had access to his property other than the property owner giving him permission, which can be taken away at any time. Mm -hmm. Councilor Gloria. The adjacent property owner, he's not interested in giving you an easement or anything or any, any kind of type of legal to put access. it this way, he is the one that approached me, or approached us, yeah. to ask if we would please consider, you know, getting access. Councilor White. I'd like to believe there was a caveat at one time stored somewhere that allowed access for that house. I, as far as I know, only from what people have told me, that there likely was. Uh, both the new owner of the adjacent property and and you guys as well had their lawyers look into yeah. it and there was there's absolutely nothing in place so either it got misplaced or lost or yeah because when I got the lawyers when I was dealing with the with the estate I had the lawyers check and they couldn't find anything that, any kind of legal documents to say that there was something on paper saying that that would be permission would be granted for an indefinite period of time. I know nothing about that, that part of the law, but were Arcadia stored in a central repository somewhere? I trust that the lawyers would know that and, and when they were yeah. asked to research it, that they would have looked. Okay. So just to refresh my your proposal wanted to run a, a, a road access to the uh, to the south to meet up with the, the road that heads north to where our, where our wells would be? That would be great. We would run parallel. Well, from that road. road to the north. Oh, you fr from that road, you wanted to head north to Yeah, it would be an extension, basically, of that Westwood Road. Right. Yeah. Okay. And it's right along the crest of the, like you say, when it comes to drainage and everything, everything's right there, so it's right at the top of the hill, and that's town property that goes down 150 and 100. Well, you know what, I paced it off today, and it's approximately from the front edge of the garage where the road would have to, driveway would have to come in from that access road to the property line is about 125 yards, meters. Yeah. And it would be a laneway, not, not, really, not really built as a road as Derek, I had watched the YouTube videos on your meetings and Derek had illustrated that it would, it's basically a lane, not so much a road. You know, you're not digging it down this far and putting fill in this, just making top material off, so. Councilor White. Derek, have you, I know you've been playing around with some schematics there. Have you had a chance to look at that at all? Have you had a ballpark figure what that might cost to build? I don't know how the definition is a trail, but it's apparently it's not quite a road. Uh, yeah, I did estimate uh, what it would cost just to basically take the topsoil off, fill it up with some gravel and traffic gravel on top. And uh, on the high end, I believe it wouldn't cost any more than 17000 What's that? 16, yeah, 17000 <coughs> Okay, well, um, so, okay, go ahead. Uh, I guess for, for Derek as well, back when that land would have been set aside as a public reserve, is there anything that the town would have had as far as what their intention was with, with that, or eventually? Like it wasn't set aside as a road allowance. Is there a difference, or do we make that distinction? We would have to change it legally, so it would have to be resurveyed and taken out of the public reserve, and then we would have to put it into a road allowance. That also raises just one more one more question too, that if that property, when they were building that, that home, if they didn't have some sort of access to that property, why would the building permit even be granted if there was no access even given, like, you know, oh, I'm just sponging off my neighbor driving across his yard, but maybe I'll get a road at some time or whatever, I don't know. 
but you'd think that it would need like a street, just like with the condos across from the Westwood, that that road is being built for the condos. But, you know, I mean, you're going to have to have some sort of... It did last little, I'm thinking, in that. Um, well, that brings up a good question. It's sort of an answer. So, uh, the the uh, old motel was there previous to the house then? The motel was built a year before the house and the taxidermy shop. Okay. They were built by brothers, in fact, my uncles. Okay. So, that I had a little, did a little research, called my aunt, and I actually found out what year everything was built and, and kind of what went on there. So, you know, probably originally, even between brothers, it was a verbal agreement. You know, and I believe the property that I now own, I'm the fourth owner over the years, and likely at least that many for the motel property. I would also like to interject that I do understand that all of the taxes that are paid are not put towards access, but I also feel that for 54 years, that there's a portion of those property taxes uh, that should have gone towards that or would have been used for maintenance and, and snow removal that the town has never incurred a dime's worth of expense towards that. So I would like you to consider that. Um, so, you have another question? Yeah, I got another question here. When the town acts as a developer on a property, and I know it kind of varies by situation, but we must have a policy when we act as a developer, what? What is the breakdown of what the property owner pays for, for the infrastructure and what the town pays? Is it solely those lots that are, like, say, over by Councillor Sackle's area there? Uh, is there, what, was all the cost of putting in that road borne by those lots? Or, or does the town bear half? Like, as you know, when we do re when we repave a street, the town pays half, the property owners pay half. What, what, is our, what is our past policy then? On a development? On a development agreement, the developer pays 100% of the road building costs. So we just said we were the developer on Curry Road North. We incurred 100% of those costs and we sold them back because we owned the property on both sides uh, and we incurred our costs back in the sale of those lots. Or we like to, depends on what we sell them for. Right. <coughs> also, uh, cycle. Because when it comes to cost on maintaining that road, that would be like a personal driveway, and, and the town doesn't do snow removal on personal driveways or or uh, maintenance as far as on the roads go either. Yeah, but it would, wouldn't be the town would have taken it over if they built it. So why would it be called a driveway? Driveway from maybe where the road comes across into the property, but that that lane that lane that's going to be constructed, and the tap off which would be called a driveway, that wouldn't be called your lane because the town's maintaining it. As Derek had said in the past meetings, that they take it over. And yeah, because so it's a road, road allowance. Exactly. Be considered. Yeah. The developer would build it, they have to maintain it for 12 months, and we take it over and maintain it. <clears throat> Just like in the case of 3rd Street North, where co op is, the developer had to maintain that infrastructure for 12 months. After that point, we take it over. Council White. And the developer, just east of your place, whatever the fuck. We don't plow that road up, that lane out into there. If we do, we charge them. The, the road, we... The condos. Oh, oh yeah, no, Does no. that call the sack and come back out? No, that's that's private property. Because that's the same as... But this would be town property because right. it's not yeah. his. Mm -hmm. Correct. It'd be road yeah, that's, yeah, that's part, of the part of the town. Yeah. And basically when you... Oh, sorry. Basically when you look at this and you even think about the property taxes that he paid over 38 years, that was solely to pick up two garbage cans once a week. So when you really think about the factor of the dollar value of what you put out for taxes, you know, I lived on Swan River Drive. I, I had my street cleaned, I had my garbage picked up, you know, street sweeping and everything else. There was no maintenance whatsoever incurred, so. Council Moore, yeah. Uh, the question for Derek, look, if this is uh, gonna be a, a public road, because it's on public property, uh, would there be a minimum standard as to the, how that road is built versus just a, uh, take the black dirt off and put track the, gravel down? Because there's no, there's no real room for development going north, there's, no, uh, there's nothing to be, you know, there's just no development going there, that road's going to go nowhere. Uh, 
I would consider exact doing exactly what I what I've told Brent is is constructing a lane because that's that's all that's needed. I think it would be a waste of money to build this to a, a street standard, ten meters wide. So we have the ability to do that then. Yes. Yeah, we have uh, specifications for lanes, streets. Yeah. Councillor Do you know how many landlocked properties we have in the town of Swan River? Uh, no, I don't. I can't tell you. But there's, we do know that there's, there, they are there. The majority that I know of are undeveloped, so they're trees and grass. Councillor Oxford, Mr. Robley, and probably. Didn't ask your answers, but did she happen to say who she, she they, the original bear lots would have been bought from? Would no, you know? no, I, I okay. and I meant to ask, and I, I just mm -hmm. you know if, if they were bought directly from the town, then not, that that answers that pretty quickly. We were obviously developing something. Yeah, and there is one uh, one case where there's a house on the four lanes that was purchased. And his his access was taken away by his neighbors, so he had to he had to build a road, purchase his easements, go through his other neighbor's property. So there is an example there. And just excuse me, and just the fact that the, that that public works property is there would seem to me that way back then there were plans. You know, obviously they kept it for some reason. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so the the other the other property that was landlocked that you just spoke of, they had to build a, a road through all the public property, or through through all other private property, get easements, whatever they had to do, till they met up with the public roadway, correct? Yeah. So now I guess in Mr. Robbie's case, he's almost done that. He can't go build anymore on private, and he's hit our he's hit public reserve. He, like even that situation is a direct comparable. He has no neighbor which to get any. Well, I guess he can get an easement from if the neighbor's willing. But obviously, in this case, the neighbor isn't willing. So he's he hasn't met. He he can't meet the public roadway no matter what he does. Even if he bought land, there's no land to buy between him and the public roadway. He's built right up to the public reserve. So I don't know if that plays a factor or not. It's I think the major concern is the fact that you know there could be if there's nothing in writing. There's nothing written down, there's nothing signed, there's just a verbal agreement that all of a sudden, in a week's time, there's a change of heart, all of a sudden, the access is gone. Carl's parking out on the Westwood Road in front of the Westwood and now he's going to walk into his property because something happened and, you know, you're in a situation like that where when there is town property there to be developed into a lane. And I, I just feel that through those all those years of him basically committing himself to his the luxury of his neighbor, saying, okay, you know what, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. And then if they would have had a spat, I don't know what he would have done. He would have found himself sitting here too, saying that, hey, you know what, I've paid taxes for almost 40 years. I need to have something built so I, I'm not cut off from my property. Councilor Gloria. Julie. It counts when I head with this with this qualified can we use our gas tax money for this? I should be. I wouldn't see why we couldn't, but it's a public road. Yeah, I do believe Public so. lane. Public <laughs> it's a public <laughs> lane. There's a difference. I do believe okay. that's one of the eligible projects, but I would have to confirm that. Okay. Council White. I can't speak for the council because we want to discuss it as a group, but would you ever consider splitting the cost or something like that? It wouldn't be out of the question. Okay. Well, I think that uh, council will have a chance to uh, discuss this, and uh, we will give the chance to get back to you and uh, see what our decision will be. We should be able to get back to them this week, I would yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. We did okay. quite some time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much perfect. for your time. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, moving on, we have another delegation, our Swan Valley Splash Park Committee. We have Shane Musician, I believe, and Calvin Bordian. Thank you. Uh, 
Could Erin Brown, I'd like to share with Erin. She's the next one. Forgot. Erin Brown, Erin Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks a lot for this opportunity to have this discussion finally. It's been a few months coming. So, we're, we've sent out an email regarding the Splash Park Committee and what the Splash Park Committee's roles and responsibilities we think uh, are going to be. And uh, there seems to be a lot of uh, confusion out there as to what the ongoing role will be with that splash park once it's constructed. And uh, everything from uh, the, uh, an independent board will be looking after it, the splash park fundraising committee will be looking after it, and the town of Swan River will be looking after it. The intent of the uh, fundraising committee is to raise the funds to develop that park um, in consultation and in, in joint workings with the town of Swan River Council. And once that, con that park's constructed, that park would become part of the recreation facilities within the town of Swan River. Um, for some reason, that's been, there's been some confusion out there, but that's been the intent of the Splash Park Committee from the get-go. Uh, some initial meetings we had, there were some concerns brought forward from Council indicating that uh, they would like to see an independent board, and if that's the case, then the, you know, the, the fundraising committee is in no way or shape form or form of looking at being an incorporated body or a uh, uh, board-operated body to look after that park for the long haul. Um, so throwing that bomb out there for everybody, um, I'm hoping that the council will now, and everybody will be on the same page with that, and it, it raises up a question if, uh, on whether or not council is in support of, a, of the development of this park uh, knowing that they're going to be the ones that are going to be um, looking after the operations. That being said, the fundraising committee is also committed to um, raising the operation funds for 10 years at current market value of what we estimate those costs will be. And any additional dollars that we see as savings coming out of the um, capital development costs, which are currently sitting right now. We haven't redesigned the park. That was one of the questions that came back. I think Councilor Delorier mentioned that we were looking at building a smaller park. We haven't gone through the process of, of uh, asking that question of the uh, company that we're dealing with at this point in time. We're still shooting for a target of $400,000 for capital and uh, $100,000 to $150,000 of operating. If that park comes under, and that's cash, that's not value in kind included, we're looking at raising that much cash. The value in kind that we're hoping we will be able to secure through um, different companies within town that will be allowed to work on the park will lessen the cash burden and that cash burden will funnel over into the operating. Um, we, do, we know we're going to have some change orders, we know there's going to be hidden costs like any other project. Uh, we're estimating 10 to 20 percent, 10 percent being the more realistic number on change orders. So we know that if uh, we've got $80,000 in value in kind and $320,000 of cash going out, there's a potential there's going to be a $40,000 on top of that for change orders and, and issues that come unforeseen. So our intent is to make sure that we pass on enough uh, operating money to be able to operate it for 10 years, including the ongoing maintenance of filters, um, the bulbs for the UVs, if, if we go with that uh, recovery system, which from, an, from a cost perspective is the more economical to go with um, due to the uh, cost of, of what it would cost us to eat for water. Uh, water and sewer, going off of the um, document that I received from over yonder, we're looking at anywhere from 80000 to uh, $60,000 to $140,000 a year for water and sewer. I don't know if the, that number could possibly be accurate because we only collect revenues of, of less less than $900,000, so that, that facility would not use 10% of the entire town's water. The consumption on the facility that we're specking right now, mm -hmm. um, if that um, facility was was operating at a 
complete, um, it's like 19,000 gallons an hour. Yeah, like 20 gallons an hour. Is so what they're saying if this thing is going like full bore. At 100% usage for the year, it's 13 million gallons. Yeah. 100% usage for a 10 month, for a 10 week period. 10 hours a day. So that means it's being used 10 hours a day. Yeah. So if we if we've been basing everything on a 50% usage, that's still 6.6 .6 million gallons. So that 6.6 .6 million gallons works out to uh, 10, that's over how many, how many, how many day, period did you say? That's a 10 week period. Works out to $80,000 for water and sewer. If we go with a recovery system, it'll cost us more on the front end. But even, if we go with a recovery system, when we go with the 9th Avenue site and we have to pay the overtime, to have the rec commission and the rec staff come in there and check this thing three times a day. We're looking at an annual cost of just under $50,000, and that's consumption, labor, and uh, equipment replacement. If we go with the rec and wellness site, the manufacturer's telling us 10, we're thinking 14,000. And that's that would be based on the um, checks on the filtration system and stuff like that being done by the uh, lifeguards that are currently doing checking the filtration system at the Rec and Wellness Center currently during the day and there'd be no incursion there'd be no incursion of overtime for weekends and evenings. So we've got as a planning committee we've got a couple of things that, that we need to um, look at. And then the third item that we'll get to eventually would be the um, charitable status um, issue. So if we look at the first one, it's looking at whether or not the council's um, on board to have this entity developed and have the rec commission be the ones operating it with the caveat that we're going to raise the funds to, to, support it. to support it based on current market value. The rec commission or a rec department? Rec department, sorry. Okay. Hey, give me a break. <laughs> I've said rec commission for 27 years. It's hard I, to I know it's dear and dear to your heart. <laughs> No, no. Did you ever get anywhere with the, the well idea? Yeah, yeah, we talked to some other communities that have had dug wells just for that purpose. So, a couple of French communities south of Winnipeg, um, oh, yeah. both Western Rec and the other out from, from Winnipeg had done done that where they had just a, a well for that. And as long as it was potable water coming out, and even if it wasn't, they just did an inline chlorinator, which mm -hmm. is much cheaper than. Yeah. So. The one thing that, that does concern me with the well option is the hardness of the water. We've already got um, the, the aquatic engineer from the Rec and Wellness Center indicating that we may have trouble with the heads, with the hardness of the water, and there's going to have to be some additional maintenance that we had to work in because of how hard the water is and swan as it is that's treated. I don't know if it makes a difference if, it's, if, it, difference if it comes out of the well, if it's harder, softer, or otherwise. But that would be one thing I would think we should look at comparing the hardness of the water in these other communities to the hardness of the water here that we would get out of the Ottawa well. Probably be similar to what we have coming out of the wells right now, I would suspect. But it, it is an option that we that we could look at. We didn't explore going down any farther down that road because um, two questions come up with that. Does that open up the 9th Avenue site? Can we pop a well there? Or is it still restricted to being over by the Rec and Wellness site if we're going to pop a wall? Council Sackle. I guess a couple questions. Uh, as of lately, uh, with, the, with the more funds you guys are raising, it's bringing more awareness, more people talking about it, more people approaching us. So, not to sound negative, but I'm hearing more from the rate payers, a little bit of negativity, I guess. Yeah. Questions asking, do we really need a splash park when we have a great pool? So I guess my question would be to you guys the same thing. Would you, like I know there's an absolute difference between the two, but I don't want to take away from anything you guys have done because there's been you know, a lot of work done so far and I think everything you guys are doing, volunteer work and, and the time you put into it is, is amazing. So that's, that's one piece. 
just to let him, let him finish his yeah, next question. For, regarding the fact that we haven't gone public with anything, that's in fairness to council. We haven't gone and tried to um, go public with anything. Papers went on our case, the uh, radios went on our case. We've been backing off until we can meet with you guys because we didn't want to throw you guys under the bus. So we, that's didn't wanna, the we didn't want to have to be handing all of this money back yeah. to these people if, if, if you guys weren't on board and we didn't have this, you know, some concrete some concrete footing for this for this to go to go straight ahead. I think it's pretty obvious that yeah, you're probably getting some feedback as far as negativity in regards to the splash park, but there's enough dollars on the table right now telling me that people want it. My second half, I guess, being, I don't want to say burnt, but being burnt by building a pool yeah. without a huge public consultation or the word referendum, would you guys entertain the idea of hosting an informational meeting with council and you guys and the information for the public to go public to see what kind of response we're getting? Because I know there's money on the table and there's a lot of generous businesses and a lot of generous people in this community, but there's also the people that are going to ultimately be paying for it after 10 years. I, I, I'd love to say we had so many promises with the Wellness Center of fundraising and what we're going to do, and, and at this point, what you guys are giving us is promises, and, and, I, and I respect both of you, but after 10 years and you guys have moved on, and this is now on our plate, and there's infrastructure costs. Taxpayers are paying for it. So that's my question, I guess, about the town hall and the information. I, I, I don't think we'd be adverse to the town hall. The um, the one piece that would come up is the chicken and egg. I know. Right? Like if we have the town hall, then there's going to be the uh, significant amount of the public that's going to think that it's already, you know, the. the the, the train has already left the station. Um, on the other side of it, there will be an opportunity for people to be able to voice their opinions. Um, I'll speak candidly about the pool. There's an old man that I have to listen to every day tell me about his furnace, who complained every day about the pool and his taxes going up, until he realized his granddaughter goes to the pool. Now he don't, all he does is phone me and tell me about the furnace, not about the pool anymore, right? So there's going to be naysayers no matter what. Um, I do know from talking with other um, folks in different communities, these things go over really well. And um, there's a lot, there's a, a significant amount of the population that would rather go to Splash Park than go to a pool. Uh, on the other side of it, there's a significant amount of population that wants to go to a pool rather than a Splash Park. So, would we be um, agreeable to a town hall? Absolutely, we would do it in conjunction, and from the get-go, we would make sure that we've done everything in conjunction with you guys. So, um, if you guys, if that's the direction we need to go, then that's the direction we would go. We just need answers. Like we need to make sure everybody's okay with going straight ahead, because we have a lot of people that are, you know, they want to, they want to donate, they want to give, they want to give uh, money, and they want to support this project. And we're sitting on the fence, thinking, you know what, I, you know what, I know you want to give me that six-figure dollar, but I, I'm scared to take it right now because I know there's a chance of possibly we might have to give it back. And these guys need an answer today because they have tax, you know, implications they're for tax, they're, they're, tax deductions. They want their tax deductions as well. And, and the, again, the questions from the town and the, or the you know, the, the public and and the, and, the, and the paper and wanting to acknowledge what's going on and keep people aware like yeah we could easily keep people aware I think without having a meeting just but we you know we're scared to say too much just for the fact that we're not 100% which direction this is going we also don't want to tend to put that pool to walk. yeah like um, yeah I'm just enough said for that I, I guess back onto the pool to walk because that is very much why we're so hesitant um, at what at what point would you start to go ahead with actually expenditures as far as design and go and because and putting holes putting holes in the ground and, and everything like that because in my mind knowing what I know from the from the pool debacle is I, I'm liking everything I hear you guys are going to fully fund it yourselves ten years of operations funded I mean that's 
that's a lot of money sitting there. That's that's a, that really is a is a good deal. But I'd hate for it to be like the pool debacle and oh we have we're a quarter of the way there. Let's start spending money. Oh, we're, yeah. the the yeah. train like you said the train has left the station. So I mean in my mind, nothing gets spent until every penny is in that you guys need is in your. Well, and we've always in, said that right from the paper. start, you know, that was kind of our thing. We can't spend any money, we can't move forward until we have enough cash that's, that we know is going to pay for this thing, you know, right to the, right till you guys cut the, yeah. cut the ribbon. So, and that still stands. The, in, the intent is that the shovels don't hit the ground until the money's that are paid the bills. The biggest thing is making sure that you guys are all cool and on board with it and location. Location where, if I hear any negativity about the Splash Park, it's the location. Other than that, I have heard no. Some are some are favor for Rec Center, some are favor for for the old pool location, Kismet Pool location, and you know what? I just want to. I just, we just want to build a park. We honestly don't care anymore. Going back to your question, Jason, when we built the track at the school, we didn't have the money. We didn't have the cash. We were banking on a bunch of things to happen post games so we were fortunate enough to have um, some good working relationship with Maple Leaf Construction. We actually didn't cut the last check for that track until uh, two and a half months after games were done when we got the rest of the money from Sport Manitoba. So I know where you're coming from, not as big as the pool issue, but um, it also was very stressful on our, our games executive <coughs> to be sitting there with $180,000 of debt that we didn't have the money for at the time. I, I know you guys are looking for an answer from council tonight or as soon as possible, but I, I really don't know how much that answer is going to be worth anything to you considering in six months time we have another election and there might be seven new faces sitting here that we could tell you, yeah, go for it, but you're not going to be building it within the next seven months, I, I'm probably pretty sure, and yeah. eight months from now there could be seven new bodies sitting here. And that's that's one of the um, so you might you might you might be better off just to wait and see what the council that will be there to make that decision because we may not be the ones that ultimately are making that decision. And, that, and that's one of the risks. Like we've been we started planning for this in November 2015, and we've been it's been like pushing a train up the hill and using the same train analogy. Um, and the the intent was you know we could work with one council. Now we're into the situation where. Uh, unless, like, we've got commitments for about half of what we need right now. Um, if magically we ended up with the rest of it coming through and we could put shovels in the ground and have it built before the, the, uh, the election in, in the fall, that would be ideal because we'd be dealing with one council. Um, that's definitely a risk that we're going to run into. Um, the biggest concern we have from that perspective is... Uh, having to return money to, the, to, to different uh, companies going through a tax year. And I guess what I'm saying is we could tell all seven of us could say, yeah, go for it, and you still might have to return money yeah. eight months from now. That's a risk I think that we're just going to have to to take. Um, the downside to it is because we've been in this state of limbo, we haven't been very aggressive in our in our fundraising. Um, you know, we've been pretty pretty mild, yeah. and we've been backing off, and we've even telling people just hang on to it. We'll let you know in a little bit. We gotta we gotta we gotta sort some stuff out with you guys yeah. first, and, and make sure everybody's on board, and and, and the location is set um, as well. <coughs> um, this is we could be doing a lot better with fundraising than we have been, and we've done fairly well, I think. But I think if we held off and backed off till new council showed up. I think that I think it would stall out as far as the fundraising is concerned because people would think you know right away it's just well you know it doesn't look like it's going to happen and it'll start looking more and more like the pool. yeah there'll be, there'll be more, more guys the getting off the wagon than on the wagon and like the pool had steam lost steam had steam lost steam over the period of about fourteen years right now so <coughs> all right councilor White there's no concept in, in our four year mandate that we. We can always say, well, we might have to wait till the next one. I say, move well, on. It's a risk, though. It, it, you know, it, it, Councillor Delorier brings up a significant. It is a risk. 
And that's one of the things that, uh, as a fundraising group, we're going to have to... Like, well, they wouldn't look very good. If there are seven new bodies sitting on the, on the council, and there's this thing is we're getting ready. We're going to start. Depends if they got in based on that. Like that's the thing, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> they wouldn't be popular right off the bat. Yeah. And then we're we're fortunate that we have a very um, astute accountant looking after all the money's coming in, so he knows where it's coming from. Quite confident these guys are going to leave it in shambles. So you know that these guys got to turn the page. Yeah, I, have I have to deal with Swan Valley West. So, I'm so well, <clears throat> I, I think that we hear what you're what you guys are saying, you know, and I think that. This council will, will decide what this council will do, and uh, and we'll get back to you. If nobody else has any other questions. Uh, I think that we could move on to our next delegation. There's one piece that we still have to discuss. Okay, okay. I need you guys to really put some thought into it, and that is the charitable donation status. Um, I know there's some confusion over whether or not that could be a, a provided for this group to use. Um, I've sent. Julie some information on it. We've talked to our to an accountant who's given us some information on the law on the laws around the charitable donation status and whether or not it can be used. Um, with this project ultimately becoming a um, an, under the you know, the ownership of the town of Swan River upon completion, we're an intermediary group that's raising funds to to build this and. Uh, I don't know where we're at. I haven't talked to Julie about it for the last, well, I haven't sent her an email for a few weeks, but I'm, normally every two weeks they send her one regarding the C any CRA ruling on what, whether the town's charitable donation number could be used. And we're not looking to use it for the smaller donations. We've got that covered off. The It's, it's the six-figure ones that uh, we potentially have a, a six-figure donation coming in and that person's looking for a charitable donation. Uh, number with that um, contribution, which is understandable because um, CRA is probably going to want to make sure that it's going to a charitable status. And if the fund, the thousand dollars, the two thousand dollar ones, usually a receipt is just fine with that. But when you get into six figures, so we would ask that the uh, the other piece of council um, look at discussing is whether or not um, this fundraising group be used as a as a um, intermediary for as a fundraiser to build something for the town of Swan River. And uh, that link that I provided you, you Julie, that's got all the ins and outs on on uh, what the, the rules being around that would be. I'm sure you were familiar with it ahead of time. But it was sent to us by one of, the, one of the accountants we talked to. and We do feel that we would fall into that because we would not, we wouldn't be doing this as a separate um, project outside of the town's um, uh, control. Um, the direction of control is still going to be coming from the town of Swan River because we do have members from the, from the council on our fundraising committee that we're, um, are there to make sure that we stay between the lines and what's best for the town. So for, for your consideration, uh, we would ask that you would look at that and, and see whether or not that's possible. We will have Julie speak with our CFO and then she can advise to us exactly what that all means because that's, you know, the kind of revenue agency that you're referring to is, these are the rules there, so I she you. will cons she'll consult with uh, our CFO. Do you want to just highlight the section that might apply to you? I know I know you'd said, yeah. I, and then make sure that it's basically what it's got to. It's 1.2, um, basically direction controls when using intermediaries. And uh, we wouldn't fall as being a conduit because we're, um, we're more working toward with the town than we are working as a conduit to the side. And um, when I look through section five on the direction of control, the town is really, as much as we may be fundraising and looking at the development pieces of this, the direction of control is really coming from the town, but for instance, how the activity will be carried out, the activities overall goals, the area and the region and where the activity will be carried out, who benefits, the goods and services of the charitable money will buy, and like all of those pieces are all focused specifically on the infrastructure and the ongoing costs of operating this within the community. Um, by doing this, and, and Councillor Deloria and I talked about this a bit, by us doing this as an intermediary, this allows us to look at local vendors and look at um, some different things along the lines of 
if uh, Concrete Brothers wants to give us the concrete um, for free and Calvin's going to charge us $100 a, a yard, the fundraising committee in that group would be able to make that decision based on the, those kind of things. Whereas if it went through a straight um, um, bid process, we would lose a lot of that aspect of being able to use those local um, companies for value and time and things along those lines. Councilman Moore, I'll ask a question. Um, with that um, information you got there from an accountant, is that just one single accountant's or is that like a consensus of like more than one uh, accountant's interpretation? Um, while we wait for Canada Revenue Agency, that's it's from the CRA. It's from, it's from the, the CRA. CRA. Yeah. This is actually from the CRA's website. I can give you this if you want to. I just took some pieces out of that that were related to us. The website's on top. It's from the CRA. We actually got we got that from one accountant and the same address or the same email address from another accountant. The one that's looking after so there's it. a couple of accountants that have looked at that yeah, and, and interpreting it the same way. They're looking at it. They're saying it the same way. They're looking at it the same way. When you read through it. Um, I think the one thing that would have to be established is there would have to be a, an agreement between that fundraising group and the, and the council saying that we're both working towards the same goal. And that would prevent it from falling into that um, conduit piece where it's, there is a lot of questions on the conduit piece as to whether or not that conduit is doing it for the best, um, the best um, efforts of the, of the charity or whether that conduit is doing it on a different aspect and getting getting gains that they shouldn't be getting. Councillor Sackle, then Councillor White. These two items again, one for Julie. We were looking into this before, like this is, this has come across our plate, I don't know how many times for this uh, charitable receipt. What was ever figured on that? Um, the CRA has not uh, got back to us. They haven't even assigned an officer yet to our case. We asked them this very question and um, and Terry's aware, fully aware of it too. And I think the main the main part of it boils down to whether or not the town is going to go into an agreement with the committee. You know, if the town is going to have care and control of the project. And so if we were in care and control, it looks like as though we could use the chair. Yes. Okay. yes. And then my second question, I guess, was going back to operating because that's the thing that's, that scares the, you know, I'd almost sooner build it than take over the operating, to be honest, because you have one single feet and, and then that's it. But have you talked with uh, service clubs or organizations? And I know you can't get commitments, but does it look positive that you have commitments for people yeah. to pay for operating? Yeah, we do have one, one commitment from, a, from one of the service clubs for operating. They're putting in money on capital and putting money on operating. Um, ongoing over a 10 year span. That's operating money is going to that'll become town money like that will there won't be a checking account that Calvin and Shane are signing for the next 10 years it will that money will all get turned over and as these service clubs if they're going to go into that 10-year agreement they'll be writing that check to the town for that exact purpose some of them can't commit the entire lump money right now they can do it over a span of yep. five ten years and we have talked with um, we have commitment from one and we've talked to two other um, service clubs along the same lines. One question and two comment. Uh, do people get charged to go to Splash Park? Well, I haven't run into yet uh, any of that yet, no. There is some in the states that charge that we found uh, in doing some research. Haven't seen a lot of that in Manitoba yet. That was one of the questions that's come up from a couple of the um, um, service clubs uh, to cover off some of the operating. For the most part, it would probably cost more to have somebody um, collect the money than it would be to um, just have them attend it for free. What about a coin op, though? Well, yeah, I guess you could put a fence on there, and you put a you know you put your toonie in there, and that lets you into the place. But that would be the only way to really do it. Um, if you put coin ops on on the um, features on those spray features. Uh, then you're going to have to have somebody that's going to make change, and you know it, it, it gets to be cumbersome. It's we're hoping that we'll be able to raise enough money to be able to do the operating on a, and leaving it free. We do know that we have to fence it in, which is something that we hadn't put in the original plan, but we will have to fence it. Um, 
not so much for keeping people out, but keeping um, pests out. Um, dogs, cats, deer, those kind of things. How's your wife? The second part is what a compliment to you guys and your team. Our whole community does this all the time. The water situation. I applaud you. I think it's a wonderful cause. I, I can't vote for council. I can't speak for council. But I, I, I know we're all in favor. We have some worries from an economic perspective. But why wouldn't we want something like this? For sure, it's fantastic. Please thank your team for us. You're welcome. Councilor yeah. Sandler. So another question, I guess. So if you raised the funds and you had all the funds in place to, to build, and then you started to work on the operating costs, if you didn't get the, the funds you wanted for the operating for 10 years, would you still go ahead with the build? Both um, the operating and the capital is being done simultaneously. And the commitment we made to council was we wouldn't put shovels in the ground so we had all the money secured for both of you. All right. We don't want to, yeah, we don't want to, uh, we just, it's just the wrong way to do it. Any further question? Okay. So I guess, I guess you're looking from us for probably another resolution outlining where we stand after hearing all of this. Yeah, yeah and we, we really wanted to just make sure that everybody was on the same page because we there was some concern over there being some, some different ideals out there. The... Um, the one thing that we are going to have to handle at some point is going to be the location. Um, and that really boils down to dollars and cents. Like, for us to raise a half a million dollars for operating, for it to be in one location over another, is it's not feasible, especially on something that's a $400,000 park. Um, we think it's feasible that we can raise $100,000, $150,000 for operating. So. The, um, the question is, we either dump the cost, the cost of the water becomes a burden of the town and that reduces our costs substantially if we go to a waste and we go with the Ninth Avenue site. The town absorbs the cost of having the rec commission or the rec department folks, people come in, they cover the costs and that doesn't get dumped back as an operation cost to a recovery system at the, at the Ninth Avenue site or it goes to the rec and wellness site as a recovery system, or as if this well piece would work out um, and have those staff just um, maintain it from um, the pool and there wouldn't be any additional labor costs that are lumped on and then we're looking at just um, water usage and, and ongoing repairs and maintenance. It just would be easier to staff at the rec center, I, I believe, you know. As we've all discussed before, yeah. we are getting some push then on from some of the service clubs about you know they want it at the Ninth Avenue site, and we basically said that it's it's not um, it's not feasible from a cost perspective. And the other piece that's kind of hanging out there is we still have not seen the guidelines coming from from uh, public health in Manitoba regarding splash parks. So we could be doing a bunch of this stuff and then get hit with a curveball that's going to cause, you know, either cause some increased costs or that we're not aware of. We'll have to deal with those when those regulations come out. I don't think. Well, I, I think the, the longer we regulations that come out, you know, the longer we wait, the, you know, you generally you're grandfathered in. From yeah. what I understand, if you're in construction, starting construction, or have, so, I think it's just going to get more uh, stricter guidelines. The longer we wait. All right, lots of information to absorb. Hope we've given you guys everything you need. And then most of what we've said has been in the emails that we've sent out yeah. to you guys. So if there's any questions, well, means just don't, don't be afraid to shoot us an email or okay. we can come back and talk some more. Thank you very much for coming. See, See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll move on to our next uh, delegation. We have Aaron Brown here from... You said you're what? Our promotions. <laughs> Welcome, Aaron. How are you tonight? Good evening, Your Worship and Council and staff. How are you? I'll be your palate cleansing delegation. Very light and easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had sent a letter to uh, Julie to request a letter of support from Council to present a bid to the Manitoba 55 plus scheme. So basically what we're looking for is a letter from 
the Town of Swan River uh, stating support of the endeavor and um, direct support as well and what form that might take. So what I'm kind of looking for for you, this is for a 2019 event, so it'll be for a future budget on a future council, uh, but um, even the uh, uh, framework of a, you know, if you give me a letter for this bid and we have to adjust it, I, I think that that's something that they will be um, accustomed to doing at this level. Um, similar to what we did with the curling, um, you know, we would be using some town facilities for the event and we would in turn look for um, a grant from the town to offset those. That's one way to do this. The other thing is that you give me complete control um, all of Derek's staff so I can but I think like you know there's there are ways to do it there is um, I don't think a full carte blanche of any facility we want should be just oh here you go I think it would be that um, if council agrees to uh, you know we'll be looking at using um, the Legion Park for the stage and the diamonds um, the Veterans Hall for some events, and um, Richardson Wellness Center is a possibility, not a mandatory event area, but a possibility. So, um, you know, knowing that um, council's willing to either negotiate on rates or, or grant some of those facilities will really help our budget. Compared to the last event that we worked on, this budget is considerably less. We need to raise somewhere between twenty to forty thousand dollars of both cash and in kind. So it's not, you know, we had we were working with a ninety thousand dollar budget on the curling. So this is a little bit more doable. It's a smaller event. It's um, three days, the middle of June, like midsummer, mid June. So it's, uh, you know, it's an easy time. Basically, we get to show off. Swan Valley is very beautiful. Well, beautiful all the time, but very beautiful in June. So. I think um, having a large group of 55 plus people come to Swan Valley and play around in our facilities would be a very good thing for the community. And I'm looking for a letter from the town that says, please do that. So, so Aaron, uh, specifically then you're asking for a letter of support from us or you're ask, actually asking for something specific at this moment in time? Um, well, in the letter, I'm requesting that you state what form of direct support you would offer to a bid for this event. Okay. And whether that is, like I, I mentioned, um, you know, we are going to guarantee that there will be extra garbage pickup at the camp area, at the ag grounds, for example. Like, that's something that we'll have to put right. into place to accommodate this. Okay. Um, would, would you consider some sort of like, like a seed grant where we would grant you whether it's uh, the value of the facilities and then should your event make money above and beyond your, your expenses, we would be the first ones to to be paid back out of your out of your profits. I know sometimes for the, the boards that put these things on, there's profits generated. Mm -hmm. would, would you be open to that? Uh, I wouldn't be not open to it. That's the first I've heard of it. Um, the um, like I, like for me, a seed money grant is a little different than just a facility uh, waived fee. If, yeah, if we're speaking about mm -hmm. the same thing. Um, the, the finances, like any money raised on this, is to go back into senior sport development. So I don't know if you, that factors in for you as well, but leave the senior seniors alone. Senior sport <laughs> development locally, or does it yeah. go back to like some no, sort of... No, Swan Valley Senior Sport Development. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so whether it's another lane on the bocce ball court or whatever it is, you know, it would have to be something like that. Like I, I can't speak for the council, but I, I'm sure that everybody would be more than willing to you know, you know, support you, but exactly what does that mean specifically when right now we don't know what that is. I, I don't know how we would word that for you okay. to, well, make it, to make it, you know, easier for you in your application. Right. I guess basically if you would state a letter saying, you know, we either, we fully support the endeavor um, and we are prepared to offer our support in the following manners, it would be, and then you can decide yourselves, um, you know, whether it would be we agree to offset facility rental, or we agree to negotiate rates on facility rentals. It doesn't have to be a hard number. It has to be a stated direct support of some kind. So, and it's also in the 2019 budget too. It's not even something that really needs to be factored in at this time, as far as numbers go. Right. Yeah. So, and if we see the response that we saw for the curling, well, we'll be we'll be very good for numbers. <laughs> what, what is your application deadline? Uh, it has to be to um, the Manitoba Games Office by the end of March. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I was asking, I think for about mid March 15th, I think I asked for the letter, just to give us time to get everything assembled. So. March 1st. March 1st? Thank you. The letter has to be received by March 1st. Sorry, I didn't call you, but I will. 
That's okay. <laughs> Through you, your worship to Mrs. Freese, thank you. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. Thank you. Got some of this. No, no, but I need if we have to do a resolution on this. Okay, we're good. Thanks, Thank Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Okay, we will move on to uh, correspondence. And the first one is with the Mantle Bag Cultural Hall of Fame letter. That is uh, information there, basically re requesting for uh, funds for looks like a membership. Did you miss one, uh, Your Worship? Letter from Power Pro Promotions. That was her. That was her. That was her. Okay, yeah. thank you, sir. Uh, any discussion on that? We have another one from Manitoba Kids Sport Letter that I also I think is a request. For some dollars towards Kids Sport Canada. Lifeline. We also have a letter there requesting support for Lifeline. This is a service that's provided in the community. I think at this point we'd have to look at the budget and see what the budget determines. Fair enough. <coughs> and as far as the last one goes there, the weed supervisor. Uh, that's not to uh, July. This is in July. This is something I don't know if this is that Parks needs or if it's something that Derek. So I guess we'll have Derek review that and if it's something that's necessary that... Isn't it counter we supervisor? He, did, and he went to a course last year Yes, on this. I believe he went last year to yeah, So if he went last year, unless there's a new weed out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I was kind of almost thinking the same thing. If it's something that's maybe every second or third year, then that's probably would be enough, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, moving on to Swan Valley Training uh, Project Sponsorship. This is something that uh, comes up every year. You see the letter there from them and for their request. We missed 6 1. Oh, Swan Valley Animal Protection League. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, right, Swan Valley Animal Protection League. I believe that uh, Councilor White wanted to, to bring that to the table tonight. Okay, just. Uh doing some homework and I asked for the numbers, I haven't got them yet, so hopefully they'll show up soon. Uh, we pay a, an animal control officer and if I knew the numbers, what it costs to euthanize, to neuter, to spay, to room and board, to chase them down, that would help me a lot because those costs are, let's grab a number, thousand dollars a year. I have no clue. But if, in fact, we don't support the Animal Protection League, for example, what would those costs be? Would they go ten times up to ten times that? So I'm thinking maybe it's cheaper to have that animal protection league up and running than not supporting it. Because if we don't support it, hypothetically, the cost of all these other issues might skyrocket. However, I think I would like to wait till I see the numbers, which I've asked Ken to do and our staff to do before I, before I actually got too aggressive with this. And as you, we just went through budget here just a short time ago, that if, if you feel that uh, this bringing a resolution <coughs> forward from your information, yep. uh, you have every right to do so. Good job. Thank you. All right. Uh, to the part there that we're talking about, the Swan Valley Employment Training Project Sponsorship. I have a resolution here. Moved by Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor Deloria, resolved that the Town of Swan River continue to sponsor Swan Valley Employment Training Project from June 30th, 2018 to June 30th, 2019. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we have a proposal to subdivide part lot, lot 13 and 14 and 15, block 37, plan 370. That resolution reads, moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier, resolved that proposed subdivision of part lot 13, 14 and 15, block 37, plan 370, Dauphin Land Titles Office, and numbered by Manitoba Municipal Relations Community and Regional Planning Branch as file number 4455-17-7427 be hereby approved. Discussion. Uh, Councillor Morio. 
Uh, last time this was at the table, I'm pretty sure, uh, if I remember right, we had indicated to see if we could talk to those people and if they're all in favor or not. Julie. Heather and Rod have purchased a small portion of land from their neighbor, which they've been using as their backyard, and that's what the subdivision is taking care of, is moving that in onto their lot. So I guess everybody's in favor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, <clears throat> report, superintendent of works report. Any questions or comments to Derek, please? Councilor Morio. Um, do we know when uh, MIT is looking at doing Main Street cleaning up from the last storms or? Uh, I haven't been in contact with Ken or Ernie, so no, I'm not sure what their plans are. I haven't heard back from my, my proposal to them for the agreement as well. Any others? Okay. Moved by Councilor Morial, seconded by Councilor Deloria, resolved that the Superintendent of Public Works report be received. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <clears throat> Fire Department uh, annual report for 2017. I guess any of those questions could be directed to Julie. Okay. Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor Delory. We saw that the fire department annual report for 2016 <coughs> be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, fire department uh, report for January 2018. Uh, moved by Councilor Delory, second by Councilor Morio. We saw that the fire department report for January 2018 be received. Discussion? Councilor White. Uh, I didn't read it because when I got there, I ran out of time. And I am led to believe Councillor Delore that the two or three of our team had some special recognition. Well, I don't know, actually, all of them. I was, I was just mentioning to the chief who the the, the, the attendees were. No, it was nothing. It was more so a shot at the chief. <laughs> oh, I thought maybe uh, the, no. uh, the deputy mayor might want to send them a, a note of congratulations no. or something. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Sorry about that. All in favor? Opposed? <laughs> carry. All right. Uh, moved by Councillor Dory, second by Councillor Morio. Resolve that the handyman report for January 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. <coughs> okay. Management meetings, any questions to Julie on those two, January the 18th and January the 25th? Um, I see you have mentioned entering some stuff into service tracker, and you know we just had the, the fire department report. Is there any way to give us a report from service tracker on, you know, how many calls were entered in 2017, how many were uh, closed, you know, whether they were closed satisfactorily or unsatisfactorily, or or, or how many are still left open for resolution, you know, on, on a whole year's basis? Because I know every once in a while we get the report that shows what's open, but to give us a sure, comprehensive I can, look. I can do a report for all of 2017. Yeah, it it'll tell you how many were put in, how many are still outstanding. Yeah, I can, I can take a look at it. And does see it give things like reports. average time to, to resolution? Like when someone brings forward an issue, does it take three days or does it take 300 days? Okay, I'll take yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Councillor White? No? No, okay. thank you. Okay. All right, moving on to council member and CAO reports. Councillor Sackle. Well, too much to even talk about with the whole uh, uh, the water, you know, <laughs> our well issues, I guess. A um, couple positives, definitely. I think I think as a council and as a town of Swan River, uh, staff, volunteers, organizations, businesses. I don't think it could have went any smoother uh, than it did. I think everybody deserves a pat on the back. I think there was a lot of uh, a lot of hard decisions that had to be made. Not easy. Um, Might have been some of the hardest decisions. I've ever had to make being on this, uh, being on council for my second term. 
Uh, I think our staff worked extremely well, and uh, I don't I don't think we could have asked any more of anybody. Uh, the the town, the community itself, came together. <laughs> we had so many people showing up that wanted to donate, whether it be time or food or knowledge. That it was just it's just amazing. I, I hate to say that a you know I hate to call it a crisis. Uh, you know, it was it was some some tense times, but it, it almost it was a it was a learning experience, and and I just I feel it almost brought the community closer. Like you, you talk to people today that said, you know, you guys did a great job. Um, I think I think always there could be some improvements, but um, I think as as a whole, everybody worked as a team, and the information I think we've given more information as a council than any other council has ever done. I think taking uh, social media, taking it by the horns, and, and putting that information as, as clear and as transparent as we did out there to try to give everybody in the community the most information that we possibly could. Uh, I know the Facebook came, page came later, but it was kind of the whole process was growing as it was, you know, taking the time. So I think we learned a lot. Um, a couple things I think we could take away from that is just. Communication is key. Everybody wanted to know up to date. I think uh, we learned again that, and I'm going to bring it up, that we probably don't want to cater or use unreliable media. I think it just comes back to bite us every time. Um, I think on our web page, I'm going to ask Julie to ask Ken if he can get a poll started asking kind of how the public felt was the best way to relieve, uh, rely or I guess get the information out there. Did they like did they like the, the Facebook? Did they like radio? Did they like uh, the hand uh, delivered notices to the door? Did they like the robo calls uh, with you know lack of knowledge or wording of it but the, the automated calls or the town web page? Uh, I think it'd be key to hear from the public to hear what they really liked or, or how they got their information. Um, yeah, and uh, I guess we will, you know, we, we had been over-prepared, I think, as far as water distribution. There was a lot of people that actually had their own water or used other sources, so, so we will have a little bit of abundance of, of uh, palleted water that we're going to come shortly uh, with a, hopefully some sort of a, I guess, marketing of it. We'd like to, we have a lot of this water sitting in the trades building still. There's there's roughly, I'm going to say around 41 pallets. I might be wrong, maybe 38. And uh, the co-op is going to be taking 12 of their pallets back, which is fantastic. We're going to pose the question to the other people that, that brought water in for us to see if they want any back. But uh, I guess other than that, we're going to start putting on social media costs per pallet. And we're going to start... Uh, hopefully moving that out but yeah thank you to everybody in here and everybody that was involved I can't say thank you enough because uh, everybody stepped up there was people yeah I can't even I just can't say thank you enough so that's all I have to report thank you Councilor Mario um, like with Councilor Sackle and the rest of the council we dealt with a very busy week last week with the water emergency um, even though that the criticalness of the emergency is over we're still not out of the woods because we still have a second another a well to drill um, so I understand you got the works on that that uh, Derek that uh, that's going to come in shortly um, for that so um, but again um, lots of comments from within the town provincially um, major organizations that were involved and stuff like that, that the communications with them was uh, above normal what they expected and what they get from other areas and things like that. So um, that was good to hear and stuff like that. So, and unfortunately it was a emergency that affected the entire town, but it also brought the entire, entire town and the valley and neighboring residents and businesses far and wide together to solve the problem. So. Um, Enough. So with that, um, we also had a stakeholder meeting with Prairie Mountain Health during the emergency um, where they commented on us uh, with the information flow and reviewed a lot of the positive and negative stuff that's going on or works or wouldn't be negatives but still areas that need to be focused on to improve healthcare in the valley. Um, they have some 
ideas and some projects that they're working on. So uh, we'll let that for them to do. And tonight, uh, before meeting, we had our first budget meeting, which uh, stay tuned on that. And uh, hopefully we can have a past budget in the next little while. Cops are freezing. <clears throat> Who's been sick a lot? I just want to pat everybody on the back and apologize. Don't touch me. Apologize. <laughs> I picked a good time to be sick, I guess. Um, thanks for the water. It came in very handy. Um, I've heard lots of compliments. I've been at work the last, uh, well, Saturday and today. And I just, uh, I don't know. I don't, don't know how to tell you what a great job you all did. And I really enjoyed reading it on Facebook and uh, getting a call to say what was happening. So good job to all of you. Um, and then from there, I went to a settlement services and immigration meeting last night. I met uh, two charming gentlemen from Nigeria who have lived here for a year. <clears throat> one man works in the hospital lab, and I believe the other one works for ACL. And one gentleman's wife works at the Christian school. Anyway, they're... Uh, working on a video of the town because Victor, the one fellow, said when they considered moving to Canada, they really didn't have anything to look at to say what Swan River had to offer. They were in Winnipeg and other people were saying, oh, do they have hotels there? Where, where do you get your groceries? You know, this is crazy. Anyway, they're going to do a video, they're going to get Mr. Penner to do a video and it's going to show that we do have hotels, we do have grocery stores, we do have a hospital, we have churches and we have schools. So, it was kind of interesting hearing this come from these gentlemen. Um, other than that, uh, Julie is doing a great job over there and we had a potluck supper and uh, it was about 35, 40 people. And we had um, different food. Goat stew was one of them. <laughs> different. But they all enjoyed it. We went around and introduced ourselves who we were. And it was fun. So fun. Mm -hmm. Yes? Was there any lutefisk? <laughs> no. <laughs> no lutefisk. It's coming. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Councillor <coughs> Delorier. Well, you know. To echo everything that's being said, you know, people watching on, on the TV are going to be, can't they talk about something else, but thank you, Swan River. Uh, there wasn't a day during the whole thing that I didn't say to myself or to people standing around me, and usually involved a few more words, but we live in the best community in all of Manitoba, bar down. Ain't, ain't nobody better than us. The community pulled through, and you know, the graph of our water usage, sure, for the first hour it spiked up, everyone's filling their bathtubs, but the graph of the water usage put, it proves it. People fell in line, they did what needed to be done, they did what they could, and you know, people that could do more came out, they worked at the at the water distribution, they, you know, baked stews, they, I don't know if you bake a stew or not, but... <laughs> <laughs> make stew. Make stews, yeah, you, you know, they did everything that could possibly be done. We had people from all over Canada offering their advice, people that were expert in well-related issues, you know, and least, not least of all, but our public works department that were, some of them were working crazy amounts of hours. I hate to see the overtime bill for last week, but uh, but no, it's, uh, thank you. Um, on to other things not related. We had our budget meeting tonight and uh, we got our work cut out for us once again to make things palatable for, for everybody involved. Um, last night I also had a planning district meeting and normally those are uneventful and this one was not, not too different except we did hear rumblings that the land that we annexed uh, a couple of years ago from the RM, the new owner of it, is looking to get it redesignated back to agricultural. And now, yeah, this, if, if this goes through, the planning district will vote on it, but I think for Jason and I, who sit on the uh, planning district at the town's behalf, we'd like your guys' uh, direction on, on this, on, on what uh, the town's position, I guess, is on this. When we annexed it, and when, when it was, was redesignated, that is the only place the town can grow. Um, our 
we've had uh, consultants that looked at when we originally did our plan that was so this in my mind is is a step back because you know car dealership wants to build we don't have lots big enough in town for a car dealership anywhere that there or any you know another equipment dealer or any any type of large commercial tract of land and you know what it is a private owner you may never decide to sell it but you know what it just makes it all that less enticing for that land if it isn't designated and you because the designation process isn't isn't fast and it isn't cheap and it just puts one more barrier from any potential developer and you know what the private owner may never decide to sell a piece of that and i guess that's what we're stuck with but as the town i think we need to make sure that we we make things as easy as possible so I know right now it's it's designated uh, I believe it's designated commercial but I, I'd have to look at the, uh, at the plan so I'm, I and you know what there hadn't been an application made so you know I just wanted to put the bug in your guys' ears that that the town will have to but come up with a position as of right on. now it's designated commercial and isn't there a crop on it this well, year yeah yeah so even if I they don't change the designation are they still they can still put crop on it yeah yeah I think there's tax implications. So being said that, do we need to have a resolution or just council going to give well, these I, two? I think maybe we can revisit the issue. You know, let's wait and see if an application is made. Okay. But I just don't want this to take us by surprise okay. and not have a position on Fair it. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, I think that uh, was all for me. Thumbs it up. Okay, Councillor White. Holy smokes! I've been really, really busy. I have to speak louder. I'm told. Ditto to all the comments relative to the water. It drew our community together and made us better. Uh, I think we need, to, uh, we did wonderful things with the communication. What other, what things could we have done that we didn't do? Flips into mind, mind for those who didn't have the access. And what are ideas to restrict water? <clears throat> what are some things you can do at home that perhaps I wouldn't think of? Uh, January 17, I met with the uh, transitional care house ladies, because I was the only guy there. and. Uh, they're, they're still hard after money and they're, they're looking for uh, support from the federal government because there's some federal money coming through in for mental health and they're, they've been optimistic for 10 years and they're staying optimistic. And then January 17th, Prairie Mountain Health meeting again and there's been a, a real concern, Prairie Mountain Health as a whole relative to anesthetists and uh, that's a big concern in Brandon right now having enough so it's not that Swan Valley is only having trouble. Then uh, Swan Valley Outdoors we met and they have given $20,000 to the community. That was money with Ducks Unlimited. They grossed 53000 I think they kept 20000 That's money that stays right here in our, in our community. A huge hunk of that money is going to go to the Interpretive Center at the base of the Duck Mountains up here. And then on the 18th I met with Spruce Products and Swan Valley Outdoors and Lou Taylor and they talked about the cross-country ski trails. And what Ward is going to do with some of that money, he's going to build warm-up shacks there, he's going to put lights in there, he hopes to put toilets in there, he's buying a new groomer, he's going to groom it regularly, he's going to put signs up, and that's going to be a huge tourist attraction, especially for the 55 guys that are coming in, and the 72 year old guys like myself, because it's beautiful and it's flat, so it's not really dangerous for people who don't like to go up and down the hills. So there's a lot of money coming back into the area from Swan Valley Outdoors, and that will certainly help our town. Then on January 18th, I went to a HAR meeting and I went out and I invited them to come to speak to our council. And the concept is causing some people some stress relative to giving free needles to people who have drug issues. And the problem, bottom line, is that those, those needles are ending up in places we'll have to talk in another. They shouldn't be in playgrounds, in, 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 back behind schools, and they carry HIV, they carry Hep C. And if they get free needles, they use their clean needles, they don't spread the disease. So I've asked them to come here uh, to talk to council about that concept. On January 18th, I met with the superintendent of schools, and he's going to involve the schools in his cross-country ski plans and the, use, the possible using of the golf course and the museum and the interpretive center, and the superintendent was very supportive also. Yeah. Apparently there's a cross-country ski trail out at the resource at the Across from the museum, what's that place? Across from the museum? You know, the... By the museum there's a trail. I know, but across the highway, up, what is that place up in there? Highways, it, resources... It just, uh, resource uh, field office. John Thorpe told me that there's a cross-country ski trail. Interesting, I don't know that. Yeah, note that and tell him. Okay, I will. Thanks. On January 19th, I met with the Syrian Refugee Committee and uh, 
I think they have about four months left with their money, and then they'll theoretically be on their own and paying their own way, and all the, the donations from the community will run out. And I was with Phyllis on January 19th at 7 o'clock for the Potluck Settlement Services. I didn't like the goat. <laughs> I like most everything else. On the 25th, uh, Prairie Mountain Health Telehealth in Dauphin. And they're, one of the things that they're looking up, we had some questions relative to the transitional beds. And uh, they, there's roughly, I'm led to be 600 PMH people working in our valley. So there's certainly a big employer. And then the, the week of the water, which was all said so eloquently already. February the 1st, uh, Prairie Mountain Health and Swan Valley stakeholders in Swan River, as uh, Councilor Mori alluded to, and I forgot that one point, four beds are opening up in Benito, and they're calling them transitional care beds, but they could be, one of their options, as I recall, they said Councilor was, people who are out of, out of the valley, they're the first guys who are getting first dibs at them. They'll bring people back into the community who are elsewhere and give them those beds. And the money, a bunch of that money came from the Community Health Foundation to refurbish the areas, I think it was 11 or 12,000 bucks, so thanks to those guys. And uh, today, today, I'm losing my mind, February 5th today, no? No, February 5th, I had the pleasure of meeting with uh, Doug Lovesad, the CEO of uh, UCN, and had Lindsay Cook, uh, Tim Mandel, Brent Rausch, Cam Ateka, uh, the MLA, Mr. Wojcik, myself, Dr. Claire, and one of his assistants. And what they're really close to having happening, I, I, Mr. Love says it's a, it's a slam dunk. They're going to teach dental assistants in Swan River with the possibility of putting up three or four chairs in our school where they'll do training and or some other place. Uh, Dr. Claire has volunteered his building. He has 15 operatories in there where his dentists can train these people to work as chair side. So what happens, our, our young people can stay here and get their training. People from other communities in the parkland could come and get their training. New instructor or instructors will be hired. So our community wins, wins, wins. And then uh, last night, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Jacobson and I, he digs more out of them. And some things you weren't supposed to dig. And uh, Councillor Jacobson and he, uh, Dr. Clare, has just been given hospital privileges. And that what that means very simply, he can do uh, orthodontic work in the hospital with an anesthetist beside him who put that person out. Now instead of Swan Valley people having to go to Winnipeg or Dauphin for orthopedic surgery where they have the, the anesthetist, they'll do it right here in Swan River. So uh, Dr. Clare's people uh, have been uh, pretty excited. And you talk about the importance of making, letting our constituents know when we found it, we had the water, when we were told at 9.04 we could phone people, not before. It's a message. I phoned uh, Dr. Clare's office. They were on the phone right then, phoning a company in Winnipeg to box up a $40,000 distilling apparatus to get it to Swan River that day. He was writing the check when I made the phone call. And he canceled it, of course, because we had the water. Uh, so, uh, communication. So, it's been a really hairy two weeks with the water. So, I was ready to relax now. Thank you. Thank you. And, and actually, on those last two notes, thank you very much for bringing that forward. And, and that's exciting uh, news and opportunities for people. In, in our community to able to take advantage of, uh, of that education and also uh, the, the surgery that can be done at the hospital. That's just, that's that's great news. Awesome. You want to cut into mine? Well, I just want to add one more comment to mine. Okay, what yeah. I've done or right now? It's great. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> I just want to pass on a kudos to our, to our administration. You know, tonight was the first time council seen the budget, or the, the preliminary budget and what it, what it is going to look like. And you know what, it, it looks like the tightest budget management has ever given us, so kudos to your group, Julie. You know what, we still got work to do on it. It ain't going out like that, I can tell you that. But it's a lot, but in previous years, you know, this would have been about the third send back. So it, that, kudos yeah. to your group. You guys really worked hard on it. We got five more rounds. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, that's coming straight from the finance minister himself. Yeah, exactly. so. <laughs> uh, you know, everybody's pretty much said what they, they can, but you know, I, I can't stress more also that uh, our frontline people that were out there working in the, in the cold, uh, you know, identifying, you know, what had happened and uh, getting to the root of the, of the issues. Uh, they, they deserve a big pat on the back for their hard work too. And, and of course the residents and the business community and, and so on that stepped up and, and, and did whatever they could, not necessarily for us, but for the volunteers and those employees. So that was pretty outstanding as we, we got a chance to, uh, to witness. 
And, uh, you know, to Derek, I, I thank you also <coughs> that the information that you provide to us and educated us to understand what this system really uh, worked and how, what it meant to us because, you know, prior to it, I didn't even understand completely how it worked and, 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 and I, I'm so thankful now and I got so much information, I just don't know what I'm going to do with it, but <coughs> I should certainly, I can certainly answer a lot of questions uh, that uh, have a lot of data related in, in information, but uh, no thank you. And then the rest of the council and admini our administration here, I thank you for, you know, all, you know, the work that you've done and, and the support that uh, you also gave me during that time as well. So. There's a lot of work to be done, and, and not one person did, you know, a single thing. We all carried it all together, so thank you. Julie, you're next. Well, just to add to that, I just want to say that I'm very proud to be a part of the team, and um, I was very impressed with how everyone worked together, council, staff, uh, volunteers, residents, and business owners, and the positivity that came out of it, it just seems to be continuing and I hope that we can always be a positive community. Good. Thank you. So we'll uh, move on to bylaws. So everybody had a chance to read the updated uh, bylaws. So the uh, move by Councilor Delore, seconded by Councilor Morio. Resolve that bylaw number one, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, providing for the control of tra traffic and parking of vehicles be read a third time and passed. Council Moore. Uh, either I'm blind or I'm not seeing here that uh, we had suggested to that to include their no parking in T intersections. Did that get dropped? Um, uh, Ken had done some looking at the bylaw, and you'll see highlighted in blue. There's there is, no blue on here. Oh, it doesn't show you? I got yellow, but no blue. So my blue doesn't show up on there? Um, it was already in the bylaw. That there's, there's to be no parking in any intersection. So that's why. Okay. okay, if it's in there, that's fine. Yeah, it is. I'll find it for you right away. Councillor Sackle. Just talking about this parking made me uh, think about as I was in Regina today going to their health facility or one of their health facilities and trying to get a parking spot and um, in Regina at the Pasco Hospital. And I drove into their parking lot and it did a circle and I drove back out because there was no room for me and the attendant suggested that I picked one of the side streets and there wasn't a parking spot to be had and you could clearly see there was a lot of staff parking where they shouldn't have been parking and uh, and so on and it, it's not just an issue at our health facility there's definitely issues at other health facilities so that's one thing that, that you know I guess as healthcare changes and the programs change and and facilities grow, parking should be something that I guess should be looked into a little closer because, yeah, it's not just Swan River that has an issue. Mm -hmm. But that's something that, like, in our case, PMH needs to factor in their planning of, as they expand their facilities, they need to look at parking, private parking on land, not streets. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was 10, 10D states that there's no parking within an intersection. And is that sufficient yep, to yep. what you wanted? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? by Councilor Delore, second by Councilor Morio, resolve that the bylaw for bylaw number 3, 2018 be a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to regulate building within the town be read a first time. Discussion. Yeah, I got the uh, issue with it. The, the clause that's being changed, 4.2.1.2, the whole clause is predicated on the word may. You know, to me, that's, that's a, unless there's another qualifier that, that gives you the conditions for the may, that's just a weasel word that now, they, is it, they may be or they may not be, well, depending on how the, 
how the town feels that day. So it should either be shall or shall not, something that's a, that's definitive. Because right now that that whole clause is meaningless. If if I was a somebody going to build something, I don't know whether I need a permit based on that. Subjective on that. to who you are that day. Yeah. So I, I think that you, you need to go back to the committee and find out what the committee's intention was, right. or or if or if Derek, if your department, if you know what the intention was to not need a permit, then we can change it to shall, and then I probably would be okay with it. But uh, uh, or or if you want to defer back to to the building inspector and get his opinion on it, because you, you know I and I wish I would have brought it up last time, but I just it's really been bo bothering me the word may in there because what does that even mean? This was, I'm just reading it because it's been four weeks since, uh, since I reviewed this. Ron is not going to be happy with me because uh, I forgot to point to this one. Uh, not a structural attribution. You can vote on it and then still make amendments to it afterwards. If that's first wish. Mm -hmm. All right. So moved by Councillor Delore, second by Councillor Morio, resolved that bylaw three, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to regulate buildings within the town, be read the first time. Discussion? In favor? Oh, sorry, Councillor White, you had a question? Mm -hmm. All in favor, sorry? You opposed? <clears throat> I can get back to you. Yeah, okay. Okay. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Freeze, and resolved that the accounts uh, as follows be hereby approved for payment. General account from check number 21899 to number 21998 for a total of 421,126.18 cents. Payroll account from check number 4155 to number 4161 for a to total of 104, 400, sorry, 104,415 and 61 cents. Discussion. You all have seen, just go ahead. And uh, 21941, it's in, it's in uh, uh, Mr. Ganita's uh, explanations, but I see uh, it's a rec conference for Patty, Brennan, and Hugh. And the thing that, I don't have an issue with, with the amount or going to the conference, but I, I just question if they should all be going somewhere at the same time. Those are our three heavy hitters when it comes to our facilities. You know, maybe they need to alternate or two go, two go and then a different two go one year, whatever you guys decide. But I, I just kind of question all three of them going at the same time. Okay, I'll talk to Patty. Yeah, and then the very next one, uh, 21942 Neptune Technology, and that's a maintenance agreement for the radio read meters. So I, I understand it's probably like an extended warranty. Is that something we will have for the life of these meters now? Or is it just for a couple more years to make sure they're going to work? Or, or that's a three-year agreement. So that includes that includes no charges on whenever Susan has a problem with a, any Neptune software. And we have been we've we've opted not to pay for this in the past. And we did get bit. Our software went down, and it cost us like twelve thousand dollars to to repair. So it is. So that's one year's worth of charges, or that's three years. I believe it's a three-year agreement. So, but but is this just seventy-two hundred? Is that for the whole three-year agreement, the whole charge, or is that we'll get charged that every year? I'm positive. I had, like again, well, you can you you don't have to answer if you don't know. You can get back to me. Yeah, I will have to get back okay. to you because it's I'm not entirely 100 percent sure. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, whereas Section 163 of the Municipal Act provides that a council may adopt an interim operating budget to have effect only until, until the council adopts the operating budget for the fiscal year. Now, therefore, be resolved that the following interim budget be adopted for the year 2018. Government services, 375,000. Protected services, 750,000. Transportation services four hundred and seventy-five thousand. Environmental health services five hundred thousand. Public health and welfare services ninety-five thousand. Regional planning and development twenty thousand. Resource and conservation and industrial development fifty-five thousand. Recreation and cultural services seven hundred and fifty thousand. And fiscal services two hundred and fifty thousand. 
and water service water and sur water and sewer services four hundred and fifty thousand discussion all in favor uh, Councilor Morial uh, these figures that those oh, none of these figures uh, potentially exceed what we're going to be looking in the budget no they're actually um, six months worth of would you say water is half thank you yeah okay so that should be spent 750 for water sewers is what it yeah. says. That's really Sorry, yeah. 750,000. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Obviously, I thought I'd gone deaf. I see a reflection here when it was standing over my shoulder here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Okay. Okay, resolve that, or moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolve that the 2018 Swan Valley Rise budget be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolve that the 2018 Swan Valley Rise levy in the amount of $27,483 be approved for payment upon receipt of the 2017 audited financial statements. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, you have a question, Councilor Morial. Um, uh, there was some preliminary discussion as to what where Rise's direction is going and stuff like that. Did we want to pursue that discussion more later on if uh, we continue with Rise or pull out and use these dollars somewhere else or the direction? With that, or do we are we looking at um, continuing on for sure going with rise? Okay. Other discussion. Well, that's a good question. I was kind of had that in the back of my mind too. We have to make a decision on on the chambers ask, and we all seen the budget tonight. That's I don't know how the two. You know, maybe there's some sort of common sit down with everybody and figure out just what we need. I I don't know. Councilor Sack. Being, being on the RISE board, it, it's, so we have, I don't know how to explain it. So, so our mandate was to look at tourism. What's gonna come of it in the future, what I see or what I, I feel is the only thing that's gonna make it work is you're gonna need somebody that's hired doing tourism. You're going to need somebody sitting in the information booth office that's going to take this over and that's going to be their position. How that is funded is yet to be known. Uh, I know the Chamber has brought us one uh, scenario with our business tax. I think there's, um, I don't know exactly, but I think there's going to be another piece and I think it's something that is, I guess I'll open the, the segue or open the discussion on it. I, I may have some people not maybe overly excited with me tomorrow, but I think one piece we're going to have to look at is go back to the accommodation tax. Um, I know there's other communities doing it. I know we brought it forward once upon a time, and I think our biggest mistake with it the first time is we didn't do enough consultation with, with the local hotel owners. I think when you look at tourism, some of the biggest players or people that are going to get payoffs are going to be hotels, restaurants. I think if this is done correctly, the monies that is going to be used uh, for the destination tax or a hotel tax, whatever you want to call it, is going to be put into a reserve or a um, reserve might not be the the, the proper terminology, fund. but a fund that is used for tourism. tourism to fund the tourism office to fund events like Mrs. Brown was here tonight asking what we can do. Uh, you know, when you have access to that, the, those hotel rooms, every hotel room is going to be filled. Uh, we could take funds from that to to make sure we get a bid like this or to use for other bids or other events such as basketball tournaments, hockey tournaments, you name it. But I think there has to be that discussion started because I think we're getting to be one of the only communities that is almost not having the uh, the uh, destination tax. So I think that's something that we'll have to look at or work with and, and move forward. As far as still staying with RISE, I think we still have a little bit of work to do on the tourism. We have some good things happening uh, with the funding from the government for working on these trail system. We have a, we have a government that has an open ear that is, is uh, listening and actually helping. 
and working hand in hand with a local organization that Duing is with is the uh, local fish enhancement. I think there's been some good inroads and there's some positive things coming. So, in light of Delorie, <coughs> in light of the fact that you know those are all interesting uh, pr proposals that are put forward, but probably an accommodation tax won't be happening in this fiscal year if we're going to do the consultation properly and get it planned up properly. So, in my mind, then rise. You need to you need to continue it on because that that office still needs to stay open for another till till there is some till there is an alternative. Mm -hmm. But that discussion would have to begin though this year. Mm -hmm. I agree. Instead of pulling the carpet like you said, like underneath them, you know, and they have nowhere to go, or what tourism is going to do, or what's the plan for tourism. And if, if it's going to be something like what you're proposing or just having a discussion about, then maybe that's what has to be talked about in the next uh, eight months. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. So, question again. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. All right. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor White. Uh, we're, we're a section 10-1 uh, of the Municipal Councils and School Boards Election Act requires each municipality to appoint a senior election official who is responsible to manage and conduct all aspects of municipal elections. And whereas the municipality is required to establish the rate of remuneration for the CEO, now therefore, now therefore be resolved that Julie Fothergill is hereby appointed the position of CEO for the town of Swan River. SEO. 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 What did I say? CEO. Okay. SEO. Now, furthermore, be it resolved that Julie Father will be paid the following rates of remuneration to perform the duties of SEO as set out in the Municipal Councils and School Board Election Act. $1,000 per year in the year of the regular election, payable in one installment after the election is completed. Three hundred dollars by per election payable in one election installment after the by-election is completed. Council shall reimburse the SEO at the rate of forty cents per kilometer for each kilometer actually traveled in the performance of the duties of the SEO. The SEO is record required to record and present travel expense sheet to the council for the review and approval prior to payment being issued for mileage expenses. Discussion. Is, Please don't ask me to read it again. <laughs> is she not able to use the town van when she goes on SEO business? That's, um, I took that from the resolution yeah. that was done when Shirley was appointed mm -hmm. as SEO. So I think sometimes, like in the evenings, she would use her vehicle or, or whatever. I, I'm not sure mm -hmm. why it was there. Yeah, because sometimes they have like seminars that yeah. you have to go to in Dauphin or yeah, whatever. Exactly. But but in that case, can can she not? Can you yeah, and I sound bad? and I probably will. Okay. So yeah, good. Yeah. All right. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Moved by Councillor Freeze and seconded by Councillor White. Resolved that Esther Webb be appointed assistant senior election official for the town of Swan River. Be it further resolved that the rate of remuneration for the assistant senior election off officials and all other voting election officials be set at $240 per full working day. Discussion? Council Morial. I'm just curious, how did we select this name for the assistant SEO? She, she was the um, assistant last time. Her and I were both assistants, and I phoned her and asked her if she would be interested. And, and she is, so I thought I'd better get, make it official. <laughs> So we have one assistant mind. this time? Yeah. Yeah, I think that will be that'll be good. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. She also worked for the town. Moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor White resolved that the Chief Administrative Officer and Councillors Delorier, Morio. Friesen and Sack will be authorized to attend the G5 meeting held at Big Woody Community Center on February the 12th, 2018. Is that list still correct? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 
Moved by Councillor Freeze and seconded by Councillor Sackle, resolved that Kurt Rewards is hired as casual customer service representative effective January 29, 2018. Pardon? Yes. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. <coughs> You'll have no discipline problems down there. <clears throat> no. Moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor White, resolved that the Superintendent of, uh, of Works be authorized to purchase three goals. Is that right? 8RJHC-7S pumps from Northgard, North, North Art, North, North Art Engineering Sales Limited in the amount of $93,021.33 plus applicable taxes. Discussion. This, is, this is for the for the three distribution pumps, right? And this is just the pumps, or this is this is strictly the pumps, because because there is a fourteen or 15, 14 week delivery, two week uh, performance test, so sixteen weeks before we'll get them in our hands. We wanted to purchase these pumps. We knew what we were getting anyways, uh, uh, so that it basically gives us time to get the contract documents done and advertisements, select a contractor, and uh, the pumps would just be owned by the town, and that is what the contractor has to install. <clears throat> Any other questions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, whereas multiple issues between Well 2 and Well 3 have caused significant damage to the infrastructure inside the wells, and whereas using Well 2 could result in possible further damage to new infrastructure. <coughs> Therefore, be it resolved that the Superintendent of Works proceed with the necessary project or projects to repair number two, Well number 2, which would have the town of Swan River supplied back to its normal operating staff. Discussion. I guess, okay. sorry, sorry, just to ahead. detail what would, what would be done is, uh, is we would basically hire a driller to, to install screens, casing, uh, a pitless adapter, and the, and the discharge. Uh, that's, that's basically what the gist of the project would be. And what timeline is that? Uh, right now we're talking to drillers. The earliest one can get here right now is m March 5th. Okay. Uh, okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Just, I just, I just I thought of one question. Can I bring it back? Yeah, sure. Just on that last piece there. The, the drillers indicated it all, and I know we're, I know it is an emergency type situation and it has to be done as fast as possible because we don't want to be in under the same problem or say if pump one fails right now. Did they give any indication if drilling this thing in March compared to May or June would there be an increase in price? Uh, it, it depends on the driller that you talk to. One has said yes, the other has said no, so it's uh, we're getting different answers on that question. They they do say it's going to take a little longer, so it, it would be minimal. The guy who says no, but not like extremely significant. As long as we get the right type of rig, it should be able to do the job. No Please, on the wet or past the frost, it shouldn't make a difference. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, uh, moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Freeze, and resolved that the following building permit applications be received. Romy Russell, 1310 Third Street North, renovation for $12,000. Canis Baldo, 123 8th Avenue South, renovation for $25,000. And Annie Hodgson, 6th Park Drive, front deck, for $3,500. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? <clears throat> we lost the counselor. He's on his way back. He's in office of every major building. Oh. Not anymore. <laughs> yes. Welcome back. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. 
resolved that the superintendent of works proceed with a road extension of Westwood Road North approximately 130 meters. Further be it resolved that the cost of this project be covered by the federal gas tax reserve fund. This is in regards to Mr. Robert discussion. Do we want to include in this resolution that it's to driveway status and not full road? I like status? that. If I could come back to haunt you someday if we didn't. It's like, if we just leave it open ended like that, he can, anybody can come back and say that road's not down eight road. feet and all this stuff. Like it's, it's, Derek, what are your thoughts on this based on past practice? I know you um, This is something that I personally haven't dealt with before, but we do have. If you say it's not the same, but it, I'm sure I wouldn't want to talk to that owner tomorrow. Sorry, does he have land at the back of him that he could build a road and go around that way? No, it's the river. It's the river. So he really can't... No way out of there. There's no, you know, other people can make easements on their neighbor's property, but to get to a municipal road, he has no option but for the municipality to extend the road. The options are... Uh, we pay, and that's lawyer fees, roughly call it four grand to, to get this into road allowance, and then the 16 grand to, to build the road, or we, we treat him as a developer, and he pays 100%, looks after it for a year, and we take over it after that. Or he does nothing and rolls the dice with his neighbor. Exactly. I know every situation is different, but the optics of it is very similar to other people in this community that had to buy property, build roads, pay their way. I'm not saying the other person will find out, but I, I it's so similar, and the optics of it is. This I guess we could we could the town could take that out of public reserve and sell that land to him, and then it would then it would be his land, his land, and it would be. Just like a long driveway. And then we're not responsible for maintaining or plowing or anything. It's a private lane that I almost like that better myself because that I, stands I, taking it over public reserve is a four grand cost. All of a sudden we have a, a long road that is gonna be need dust control. It's going to need plowing. grading. It's going to need a, a greater snow removal on there. That's one of our roads. Mm -hmm. And if this person, after the road is built, decides, well, I, I can't get out of my lane. You guys got to plow my driveway. The garbage you, pickup will have to be on the edge of his property, which is down the end of there. Like, I don't know. I, I like the idea where if we take it out and then sell it to him or whatever, but he, then it's, he can purchase the property and he can develop it as he sees fit. The people that we had dealt with last year that had a public reserve laneway, we, we, we paid to take it out of public, you know, where the old swinging bridge was? We are charging that back. So, so we, okay. Back to the property owner. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a pretty similar one right there. Absolutely. Looks good for the goose, good for the gander then. Agree. And then they built those two individuals building their own. They built road. their own roads to their properties. That's another example. So to remind me again, what happened there? We took it out. We took it out of public reserve, and we're putting that cost onto their taxes. Are they paying it, or if we if if we take it out of public no, reserve, no, the one we did last year there. Oh, sorry. No, we took it out of public reserve and sold it right down the middle. To each uh, sold it in the price based on what it cost to take out a public reserve. I believe it was the lawyer fees, the land transfer, cut layout, the lawyer fees, and the yeah. the survey. Yeah, there, fees. there was only a five hundred dollar charge for the land, which was split between right. each of them. Um, but then all of the other costs are going to be split equally. It's just being finished up. It's a long process. Was that land public reserve as well, or was it some other status? It was public reserve. It was where the old swinging bridge was, yeah. so there's access across the river. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It was actually called a public thoroughfare. That one was a public thoroughfare. Yeah. So that that you know that one even has more credence that it was a 
road, like a thoroughfare. Mm -hmm. My mind is a roadway of some mm -hmm. sort. So. Mm -hmm. This is a hard one. Uh, I haven't dealt with something just like this, so it's hard to. There is no precedent, I guess. It's uh, there's there's things that are similar. Uh, yeah, I feel for him because his access got completely taken away. It's unfair, but. Well, so we have a couple options we'll vote on this. We can also <clears throat> maybe give him some uh, thoughts about perhaps converting it to him, uh, you know, removing it completely out of the town of Swanner hands and, and given the res him having the property entirely as, on his own. Is ba <coughs> Sorry. No. Based on the assessment, isn't that taken cons into consideration an assessment is access to road or landlocked? It's like you, like you brought up the fact that he would pay taxes on it. Yeah, he may have paid lower taxes because he was landlocked. Can you phone assessment and see if they take that into consideration? Because that makes the tax issue. Because it's like a corner lot. Yeah. You pay more because you have access to both two roads, but if you got access to none, your assessment property value may go down. Right. So, so I guess, can you ask assessment branch if when they're assessing a property, if they take into consideration that it's landlocked or they don't have a, or they have to use a neighbor's access or anything like that when, when they're, determining an assessment for a property. Council White? Uh, a family member of mine used to own that building. I'm going to, uh, both those buildings, I'm going to check with him if there was a caveat, if he knows about it. But I think if there's a legal caveat, it would show up on the land titles office. Just they my would, thoughts. But it would have had to have been registered beneath the title. One would think. And Pair Lunding used to own that. Uh, to me, if it's not registered on the land titles office, it mm -hmm. would be just a gentleman's agreement that could be ended at any time. So there's still some information that maybe we need at this time, so we table this. Well, we can defeat that can because defeat it doesn't sound like that option. Okay. Or, or I guess people will vote however they want on, on the resolution that's on the table. Okay, so the question again, and uh, all in favor? Opposed? Okay. So we, Phil, I didn't see your hand. Did you vote in favor or against? I still don't know how to vote that way, <clears throat> so I'm opposed. Okay, so let's defeat it then. You'll let us know, Julie, what you find out. Okay. Moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolved that pursuant to Section 152.3 of the Municipal Act Council, go into committee and close the meeting to the public. All in favor? Opposed?